And then at 9.34 p.m. Wednesday, two transmissions on Wednesday, uh, they'll be in their third revolution around the moon, and we'll see the moon from 69 miles up in color. Although, as they point out, the color is pretty gray of the moon itself. But we may see the Earth, those spectacular pictures, remember, uh, from uh, Apollo 8 uh, of uh, the Earth rising on the moon's horizon. We may get a picture like that. And then Thursday at 3.01 p.m., the undocked lunar module moving away, some 40 feet away it'll be at that point from the command module uh, just before it goes down to within 10 miles of the moon's surface. On Friday, 1.23 a.m., uh, for those of you who are up, Stafford and Cernan will be back in the command module, and we'll get some pictures of them as they have returned from that uh, near moon surface, and as they are back in the command module on its 17th revolution of the moon. On Friday, 7.08 p.m., in their 26th revolution of the moon, and then Saturday at 6.33 a.m., 25 minutes after they have started back toward Earth and are still pretty close to the moon, so we ought to get some pretty good moon pictures from that one. At 9.23 p.m. on Saturday, Saturday night, not quite halfway between the moon and Earth, some more pictures of, uh, undoubtedly, of the Earth at that point. They'll be about 170,000 nautical miles from the Earth then. And 7.38 a.m. Monday, just five hours before splashdown, there are 50,600 statue miles from home, uh, five hours from entry, and that will be our last television transmission before they splash down a little after noon uh, in the Pacific Ocean on next Monday. These are the, these are the television transmissions which are scheduled, and uh, Tom Stafford has suggested that he might give us some extra ones along the way from one time to another. Each of these Apollo flights, of course, depends heavily on the missions which have preceded it. Apollo 10 in particular is based on a combination of the achievements of Apollos 8 and 9. And David Schumacher has a review of the lessons NASA officials learned from those two flights. David? You don't have to be an expert on spaceflight to draw at least one conclusion from the last mission. Something should be done about recovery techniques. That was more or less the way those in charge put it afterwards. This seemed a primitive conclusion to an otherwise sophisticated flight. All the more embarrassing because the television audience saw it in living color on a zoom lens. The astronauts, used to taking their dunkings in private, were not particularly concerned. Tom Stafford and his crew have been studying other aspects of the last two Apollo flights for their own mission. Well, we've been briefed by the whole crew uh, from uh, the lunar mission and what they saw. Also, we've been briefed by the Apollo 9 crew on the performance of the command module and the LEM. And uh, we've put all these together, and again, We've taken segments of each one and integrated those into what we consider the final operational lunar landing mission. There is less interaction between the flight crews than might be imagined. The workload in preparing for a mission is so heavy and so much travel is involved, there is not much time for the astronauts to sit around talking to their colleagues who've already flown. Beyond that, the missions themselves are so thoroughly planned that surprises almost never occur. Even after his momentous flight around the moon, Frank Borman was unable to return with a major piece of unexpected information. From an engineering standpoint, I think the, the thing that, re, that gave me the greatest confidence was the fact that we lost communication, radio communication with the Earth at the exact second we had, it had been predicted when we went behind the moon for the first time. So I knew they knew where we were then. <laughs> it was so well planned and so well figured out. I don't know really how it happened as well as it did. It was just that there were no surprises. It was sort of like, ho hum, this is the way we thought it'd be. The essential fact about Borman's flight, of course, was that the moon was there when he got there. Originally, flying to the moon had involved terribly complicated mathematics, but by the time of Apollo 8, the navigational problem was in hand. Apollo 8 did, however, reveal a sleep problem, which has been solved, and a sickness problem, which is not. From now on, the astronauts will sleep at the same time instead of in ships. The solution to the sickness problem is not that simple. There are theories, but no real diagnosis. Apollo 8 also revealed that the moon is not a very pretty place, further proving, according to the critics, that we shouldn't bother going there. Nevertheless, the next flight, Apollo 9, took off on schedule, and after allowing time for his stomach to settle down, Rusty Schweikert took a spacewalk. Ah. Things are still falling out up there. What
What are you doing? Throwing everything overboard? Extravehicular activity may seem to be a stunt, but it isn't really. Schweikert was making an essential, in fact, the only checkout of the suit the astronauts will wear when they set foot on the moon. I'm happy to report that everything worked just beautifully. The, the total, the portable ice support system uh, provided very good cooling. I was comfortable the whole time. Uh, moving up and down the handrail and looking at the control required to transfer from one vehicle to the other, it was a pleasant surprise to me that, uh, that this was far easier in flight than it had been in any of the simulations on the ground. After the mission of Apollo 9, officials could feel they had successfully tested the three spacecraft needed for the flight to the moon. The command ship, the spacesuit, which actually is a kind of miniature spacecraft, and the lunar module, the Spider. The LEM had been the major question mark in the schedule for several years, and it was up to Jim McDivitt and his crew to be sure it worked, the LEM and the rendezvous technique. By and large, the spacecraft perform in an outstanding manner, I think much better than many people expected. I would also like to say that the procedures that we used were as near perfect as anything I could possibly imagine. Basically then, Apollo 8 and Apollo 9 have told us that we have the tools to land on the moon and that you can get there from here. It is up to Stafford, Young, and Cernan now to blend the two flights and lay a red carpet for a lunar landing this summer. David Schumacher, CBS News, Manned Spacecraft Center, Houston. And David, of course, the point of this flight is that while for the first time they had an all-up flight, that is, they had the command module, the lunar module, and they tested it out in the flight of Apollo 9, that was in Earth orbit, in the Earth's basic uh, environment. Uh, it's weightless out there, uh, of course, and this time they're going to be trying it with some weight on it. They're going to be in the moon's gravity, down to 10 uh, to 50,000 feet, within 10 miles of the moon's surface. Gravity is going to be acting upon the lunar module. It's going to have to perform in a uh, gravity circumstance in the lunar environment, and that is considerably different than the Earth orbit environment. This will be a crucial test. It's also just the second test of the all-up Apollo Command and Lunar Module ships uh, as it is. Furthermore, the Lunar Module is going to have to test out and not only the descent stage getting down to this point of just 10 miles above the moon's surface, but then for the first time, which was not tested on the, uh, on the Apollo 9 flight, the ascent stage is going to fire away from the descent stage in the same manner as it would if the descent stage were on the moon's surface. And it, that fire in the hole, as it's called, as they are still joined together, they blast off uh, to separate rather than just drifting apart. It'll be the first time that's tested, and that just 11 miles over the moon. So uh, this is a tricky flight. There's no question about it. Everyone in the space program agrees that this is the trickiest yet and that they get trickier all the time. 11 will, of course, be the ultimate. Uh, but this one is uh, as difficult as any flight that has been flown, but we've got the most experienced crew we've ever had aboard, too. Uh, a total of five uh, space flights uh, between the three astronauts, two each for Young and Stafford and one for Cernan. And Cernan uh, is experienced a spacewalker. He spent two hours and 10 minutes out of Apollo 9, uh, Gemini 9, with Stafford as his command pilot. They'd flown together before and uh, the three of them have been training together for almost two years for this flight. Bruce Morton uh, is at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. And Bruce, I imagine that they were pretty pleased down there with the, the results of that color television picture, weren't they? They really are, Walter. They really are. You know, usually uh, everyone down here on plays, it's uh, almost as if the whole uh, cast of Mission Control had uh, come from central casting on a mass order for... Uh, people who downplay everything, but uh, this time they really were jubilant. You know, I think it's just the change from uh, all those weeks on previous missions of looking at the display boards here, which uh, are usually full of numbers and graphs and charts, things that are informative, but not, uh, not exactly eye-catching. And you could just feel the mood of this place uh, lift when those color pictures came on. They had a demonstration here a couple of days ago, uh, camera down here and it worked very well on the ground but of course nobody was really sure just how well it would work in space it did uh, it did better than uh, than anybody could have hoped for it's uh, I might just add you remember way back when color television was beginning there was a controversy over uh, which method was to be used for it and this uh, 
goes back to a method that uh, I think CBS back then, a method which lost out a color wheel. Uh, and uh, that, is, that is the system behind this camera. What it really sends back to Earth are three separate black and white pictures. And the uh, degrees of grayness in those pictures then get graded on this color wheel and electronically uh, are turned into color. You may have noticed the breakup a couple of times when the picture would separate out into the three primary colors. But uh, at any rate, they're, they're really just terribly pleased here. It, uh, it looked so well, and I think it gave everybody in mission control for the first time uh, something of a sense of being there, not just sitting on the ground and offering advice. Order.